Hi, I'm Prof Al and welcome to Chemistry Matters. And in the lab today, we are going to set up a distillation. And uh, yeah, that's always fun, uh, getting to put quick fit glassware together. Uh, it's a bit like sort of chemistry Lego uh, in a sense. So before me, we have got all of the material that we're going to be using. And again, this will probably be very much like what you are um, given when you get into the lab to do one of these experiments. So let's just go briefly through all of the glassware and then we'll go putting it together. Now, first up, um, this is special glassware. It's called quick fit glassware. You'll see that we've got ground glass joints all over the show. Please be careful with this stuff. It really is rather expensive, very, very um, high tolerance uh, in the measurements for these um, ground glass joints. So don't go dropping them, please, if you can possibly avoid it. Okay, first and foremost, we've got our round bottom flask. That is what we are going to put our liquid to be distilled in. And then we have got uh, a thing called a still head here. And into the still head, we are going to put a thermometer, complete with a thermometer adapter that just sits in there. We have then a condenser. So this is the condenser, and this has got water, cold water running through it. It's sort of a double jacketed uh, arrangement. You'll be able to have a look at one uh, by yourself when you are doing this in the lab. We have a receiver adapter here, and that goes on the end of the condenser. And that's pretty much all the gear. We've got a heating mantle here that is going to supply the heat, obviously, for our uh, boiling, our material here. A couple of retort stands that we're going to hold the whole thing together with. And so let's get on with it. Now, assembling these uh, <laughs> can be tricky. So let's just work through this. So we'll put our round bottom flask into there to begin with. And we'll put our retort stand, let's put one there, and we'll put our other one here, and <clears throat> let's then, right, so it's really important that you clamp in the correct places because the clamps are going to hold the whole arrangement together. If you do put them in the wrong places, it could easily fall apart. You'll end up breaking your quick fit glassware and your instructor will not be happy with you, okay? So um, that's clamped nice and firmly there. We have our round bottom flask there. We then take our still head. That goes in there like so, okay? Again, a thermometer with our thermometer adapter goes in the top of the still head like so. Now it's very important that you have the thermometer at the correct level in the distillation and that level is essentially right at this point here um, and what that is going to do is it's going to measure the temperature of the hot vapor just before it um, starts condensing. Okay we then uh, put on our condenser like so and our condenser is already attached to um, a tap. We've got our receiver adapter there and it's really important that you clamp this in the correct place, okay? Because the receiver adapter will fall off if you don't have it clamped, okay? So we're all pretty good there. Now with the clamping, it's really easy to um, over clamp, to over tighten the clamps and you end up crushing the uh, joints, which isn't good, or else you clamp in the wrong place. For example, you put the clamp there, that means that your receiver adapter isn't attached to anything. Gravity will eventually take hold, it'll fall off, it'll break. So there is our um, beaker that we're going to collect our material in. Okay, so we're pretty much all set up. The one thing I haven't mentioned about the condenser, now again, as I say, this has a continuous flow of cold water in it, the rule for condensers is in the bottom, out the top. So you always attach the tap to the lower end of the condenser. So the cold end or the cold water is coming in the bottom of the condenser. It is flowing up this way and out of the top of the condenser. Okay. So always remember that whenever you're using a condenser, be it in a reflux, a simple reflux, or in this case, uh, or as in this case, a distillation, make sure it's in the bottom out the top. 
So now we've set up this impressive looking piece of kit. What are we going to do with it? What's the whole point of a distillation? Well, what a distillation does is to purify a liquid or purify a solution or get uh, one component of a solution free of the other component. So today what we are going to be doing is we are going to distill this liquid here. Um, and hopefully if we do this all correctly, what's going to happen is that we're going to end up with a clear colorless liquid at the end of all of this. So we're going to purify this, which is a mixture, uh, into uh, one of its components anyway. So we're all set up to go. Always have a last double check of everything, make sure everything is all set up correctly. And then what you do, probably usually best to just take that out and very, very carefully, you probably should use a funnel for this, but let's see how we go. You just pour in your liquid to be distilled into there, hopefully taking care not to pour it down the condenser because that will kind of defeat the whole purpose of the uh, of the exercise. So we'll just pour a little bit more in. We should be all good. Okay. So there we go. And there we go. Now, um, one thing, it's tempting to overfill the round bottom flask. Don't fill it any more than, say, around about half full. Um, if you've got more, do it in two stages or do, two batches. Don't try and get it all done at once because it might sort of start boiling over, etc., etc. So be careful with that. The other thing not to forget, these guys here, these are called anti-bumping granules, okay, or in certain parts of the world, boiling chips. And you only need put in a couple of them. And by a couple, I mean a couple, okay? Don't go putting a whole handful in. Again, more is not necessarily better in this case. Right, so we are pretty much all set to go. We have our water flowing through our condenser. All of the joints are tight. That's one thing to check and make sure. Obviously, well, okay, let's, let's talk through what's going to happen here so that you've got some idea of what to look out for. We've got a liquid in here. We're going to heat that up and we're going to heat it up to boiling. And when it boils, what happens? It turns into a vapor. So the vapor is going to come up here, come up, come up, come up, come up. It's going to hit the thermometer. That's going to give us the boiling temperature of this liquid. And then it's going to travel down the condenser. It's still going to be a vapor, still going to be a vapor. And then all of a sudden it hits this cold tube that's got cold water flowing through it. And then what's going to happen is it's going to condense, hence the name condenser, and it's going to trickle down here, trickle out the receiver adapter and into your beaker. So having said that, it's really important that all of your joints are tight. Otherwise, what's going to happen? All the vapor is going to escape. So that joint needs to be tight. That joint needs to be tight. That joint needs to be tight. OK, so make sure, particularly this one, this one slips off very easily if it's not clamped correctly. So um, everything looks to be pretty good, I'd say. So what we are now going to do is we're going to turn on the heat. We've got our anti-bumping granules in there and the anti-bumping granules are, as the name suggests, to stop your solution from boiling too vigorously or bumping. It means it's just going to simmer away nice and gently, a nice gentle boil rather than bump, 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 bump. So um, we're going to have to wait a while for this to uh, get underway. It's got to heat up to boiling. So we will take a little break and we will see you in a few minutes. Okay, uh, welcome back. Things are happening here now. We've just started to boil. So what will now be happening is that the hot vapor will be coming up and it will be heating up all of this glassware, which at the moment is fairly cold. So the vapor just doesn't come straight up and condense. It's got to heat up all of this glassware to the same temperature, okay? So we're boiling quite vigorously now. And what will happen, and obviously I can't show you this Oh, there it goes. There is your vapor going up there. You may be able to see that. You may be able to see that. It's just hit the end of the thermometer now. And so the thermometer, the temperature is going up and up and up and up. And you can see the vapor now dripping off the thermometer. So what will now be happening is that the vapor has reached this point. It will now be traveling down this tube here. It'll hit the cold 
condenser and it'll start condensing and in the not too distant future we're going to see some drips coming out of here and there are the drips okay so there is your pure liquid coming over now you'll notice that the pure liquid is both clear and colorless and that's our product so um, we've achieved what we wanted to achieve our distillation has turned a solution that was originally this color into now a clear and colorless liquid uh, so ordinarily you might think this looks a little bit awkward uh, the way that we've set it up yes it is because obviously uh, you're watching it from that side so we've set this up to suit the camera ordinarily all the uh, retort stands and stuff like that would be set up opposite but uh, this has been done for your viewing pleasure everybody so hopefully you've learned a thing or two about uh, I guess number one how to set up a distillation and that as I say can be pretty awkward getting all the uh, bits in the right place making sure they're clamped in the right place uh, making sure you remember to put your anti-bumping granules in turn on the uh, heater and uh, you're away so um, that's it for distillation so join me again in the next video when we learn how to use another piece of lab equipment so until then see you later